Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I get, you know, answering some of these different questions I get from you and thank you so much for taking the time to comment. That makes it a lot more fun for me too. And I know where you are and some of the questions that you have. Uh, one of them that I was actually answering from one of my online classes was dealing with transparency of the pedals and, uh, you know, some of the problems that you have with it. So let's we'll go through and let's look at how to correct our roses and use some of the uh, uh, transparent techniques or the optical techniques that create the look of transparency. And for some of you, I'll tell you what's coming, those of you that are in my S201 class. I'm starting this this afternoon too. I'll tell you more about that in, uh, during the video here. Okay, let's get into this. Um, this is an uh, uh, 11 by 11 board and I took a little bit of blue, burnt sienna, and white. The blue I'm using out here today, I've been painting with it, doing a bunch of, of uh, classroom videos, is uh, sapphire blue and uh, burnt sienna and the white. So my colors I have out here are my Hansa yellow, my Darulite yellow, yellow oxide, uh, naphthol red light, burnt sienna, pine green, sapphire blue, the uh, red violet, the uh, uh, quinacridone violet, and the white. And these are my cools on the on the uh, palette here today. So I took that board and then I sanded it down. This is my normal little MDF uh, practice boards and I turn them into paintings anyway. And um, I think what I'm going to do, we're, we just, I like to create some type of movement and stuff into the painting. So I'm going to create some movement here. I, I just really like the sapphire and that burnt sienna that's just been hitting me lately. I'm going to put a little bit of extender in it, not really to keep it super wet for a long time, but just to, you know me, I like to add some movement and stuff. And I like that, I like extender into the color. It just slides over the surface here. Let's put a little brighter burnt sienna right into the center here this as well this will help us i i like the the um and i know i do this a lot and here's a little green um i like the this type of movement this really has changed and these types of paintings when i do this just sell so well for me and uh, so i like to do that and i'll just pull through a bit uh just to add some nice nice movement to the background here we can Add all kinds of stuff and do it all different kinds of ways, you know, just push color through. If you, you know, that's a little bit samey same right there. So sometimes I'll just take a little water and just go right through it to break it up like that. I don't want to, you know, get these angles going too many different directions because that gets a little distracting too. So, but uh, it's just kind of fun to create some interest to the background. Then you continue on. Okay. Let's get into this painting here. Let's grab one of our, uh, you can see my nice dirty hands from all the painting I've been doing today. It's later on in the um, afternoon right now and I've done a lot of uh, a lot of videos. I told myself I have to get some of my classroom stuff done. And then of course this is the classroom one here too. And this is my joy this evening. I get to sit down and paint this one. This is uh, actually a photo I created in um, Photoshop. and. Um, a painting because sometimes you don't always have the flowers around so I'll create a painting into into Photoshop I haven't added the leaves and stuff into it because I'm going to use that as a design thing in during the painting of it let's get into this light let's make a nice warm light pink white to pink we can gray it down it's nice soft a dusty pink rose with a little bit of pine green so naphthol red light pine green and a little bit of white. I always go a couple values up from my background. My background is right now right around a six, a five to a six. So I don't want to go much too much lighter than the seven. And I'm right there, pretty close to that. And I'll push in a little extender into this just to uh let's let's turn the rose this way. I painted a couple roses turned the other way today. So I'll turn it this way. Now push. Now see, the color I put on there right now, and my nice dirty fingers, you push, you already start to, to, to push in some of this color. See, the heritage is dry here already, but it can reactivate, and this it's really dry out here right now. It's 103 outside right now. Um, and I turned off the air conditioner earlier in here, so it's a bit toasty, <laughs> but it's really, really dry. And uh, so everything, even with that little bit of extender, you can see it dries up real fast. But if I, 
The big thing is our solvents, right? I tell you about it all the time. Just put a little dirty in it and dirty. I like to paint dirty. Just water and push and you'll reactivate the paint underneath and that and that starts to the big thing is you you want to if you want to paint transparency you've got to incorporate the two colors together you don't make it transparent that's an opaque color you don't need to make it transparent you push them to create a tone together and sergeant you know i'm a big those of you that follow and read a lot and watch my videos know i'm a big advocate of sergeant john singer's sergeant and uh you know, his philosophies of painting and, and Ala Prima painting. And um, I'm a big advocate of, of, of that because his study and his work has totally changed everything that I do as an artist. So let's put one right down there like that. And let's go a little bit more red. See, his roses, certain types of roses, but most of the roses get older, they lose their coloring. The petals lose their coloring and stuff. They fade away. So we can make that. That's why sometimes you see little little buds a little bit more brighter than you see. Like if you go look at rose pictures, you see buds that are a little brighter than the uh, full mature roses. So let's push a little bit of that in there. Yes, this, look at that. I put them right into a line. That's not really very good there to do that. That's my left brain coming right out there. So I'm just going to slide this one over a bit more here. And we'll take out that with some background. Boy, I tell you, that's, that, that is my left brain. I'm, but at least, at least I know now to look for this, that kind of stuff, you know, when I do that. At least now I know to look for that so I'll push that back over and uh, a little bit more this way maybe we'll maybe we'll kind of turn this one up a bit I'm not real sure yet let's go into a little bit of dark set this up let's take some red and some red violet and let's push some dark back and some dark shadow back through here just going to get this stuff in here so we can talk about transparency. That's what we want to study today. Transparency. So let's push this one out here like this. A little different. Not pushing down there over here to the side. There like that. But we'll make it a bit darker. How about that? A little more, a little bit more green into it. So the color tones a bit more. So it's not quite as as bright intensity is so important into your colors intensity there we go now that might work especially if I add it's a little off balance but I'm a professional I can fix it <laughs> so yeah I always like to give myself a nice challenge let's just push a little color back up over here and uh, there we go. We'll fix up that a bit. Okay, let's get into talking about this um, making stuff look transparent. Now I've really changed it because what I've got back here is red. And so I have to incorporate that into my rows if I'm going to make this white lighter one look more transparent. See, I incorporate that. Take a little bit of water. Push those together here. This is why you use an artist-grade acrylic because an artist-grade acrylic will reconstitute well majority not all acrylics will not all artist grade acrylics will but uh, you want them to reconstitute a little bit like that so we can use some of those techniques here and um, you know if you're using a, a, a you know a, a crafting type of acrylic they won't they have too much vinyl in them they won't reconstitute but I want to do that because that's what's going to help me get my transparency. To make something look transparent, you you don't thinly wash something over. You take this color and that color and you work them together. So first off, what I'm going to do is build the front of this rose so I can see just how light I'm going to want to make the front of my roses here. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's uh, take some right out here to the outside of what this one was going to be. Now... 
to make this look transparent here, what I do is I incorporate them. So a lot of times I'll just put a little bit of water out onto my thing. And this is just one of the techniques. But I'll push them together here like that. Push to get some of that movement there. And that starts the, the look of the transparent petal there, see? And then I can come back and just set up little edges to it like that to make it look like it's going to be transparent. It's an optical it's an optical thing here. So don't pull that, don't tip the brush and pull it all the way down. You'll just wipe out all of the the transparency or the translucency of that that we're trying to give the petals here. So I'll push a bit of those reds in that I had here. Here's a little bit of that red. So I'll push that into that sitting back there on that and I'll push that in back there. And we'll build some more light, warm, up here in the front and you know there's a lot of what we call the optics there's a lot of things that optically that we do as artists to fool the, the eye simultaneous contrast what is simultaneous contrast very thing you know this is one good reason to study color theory if you want to get good you've got to study study color theory um, this is it. Look at this color that's here. You look at this, it looks it looks pretty dark here. Matter of fact, let's um let me take this out right over here. Let's take this color and let's push it right here. Okay? And that looks fairly dark, but it's not. It's light. They look completely like two different colors, but you just saw me use these colors exactly the same. But they look like two different colors but they're exactly the same. That's called simultaneous contrast. Those are rules that, of things we know that uh, psychologically create interest in everything. And as an artist, we know how to use these rules to change things, to make things, to do things. And, you know, we study those rules in color theory. And color theory isn't just mixing black, you know, mixing black and white and make a gray or yellow and blue and make a green. No, it's all about rules. I study rules uh, and contrast and psych the psychology of color, how to do things. So, so I'm going to come in here, make a little bit more opaque, just a bit more. Bring a petal in there like that. Start setting this rose into some of its own colors as well. Here, pull that in. That's nice if I want to make it, bring it back a bit more. I'll just use the petal edging technique that I've showed you before. And we'll edge in and pull that back in. But we can make how we paint. There's kind of this color back here, a little more toned. Let's push some of that around right in here between the two of them. And see, I can use even a, a petal edging technique here. I don't even have to do the whole petal. Just pull it through like that and create the look of more transparent petals just by using a little bit of the color and a little bit of the light here, pulling that through, pulling those colors, and a little bit of water to reconstitute the petals here. And you make all these beautiful, transparent, translucent petals. As we come forward into the center of the rose here, I'll pick up more white and you know bring back more of the color of the rose that I want to have. And that will, through simultaneous contrast, that will give me a prettier rose that now advances off the surface. I'm going to warm this up. I'm going to take just a bit of that red right back through here, push that around. Push that in there. That's really dry right there, so and I, I just want to move it a little, so I'm going to add a bit of water and just move that around here. I like the roses to have movement into them. And some yellow, some warmth. Let's give it a little bit more warmth right up into there. Some yellow. Then we'll pick up some more white. We'll lighten and warm. Painting like this isn't easy. Painting like this is like I've told you in the last couple, you know, um, videos and stuff that I that I talked to you guys about. 
Painting like this is not easy, but that's not my job. My job here is to get you something that's beautiful, right? And I wrote about this today in one of my Facebook posts. I said, my job is not to make something easy that you can paint. My job is to make something beautiful and show you how you can and give you a pathway to going there. It's going to take practice, but you can do that. And the more beautiful something is, usually the more practice it takes and the longer it takes to learn how to do it. Let's pull this a little bit warmer right out here and just push that. See, so now I can get that nice transparency and build some nice warmth to the rose. I, you know, I painted years and years always wanting to paint roses and it took thousands of roses to really, I own the rose now. I mean, there's not a rose to paint that I'm not afraid of. I mean, I'm not afraid of painting any type of rose. And, you know, so like these hybrid tea roses I'm going to do there. Man, I'm I'm so excited about painting that this evening. Um, I love it. I love the challenge of it. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, there's and, and if I'm doing my job and stuff, this, I, there's going to be parts of it that are going to be frustrating for me. You know, it's like, oh, man, how do I catch that? How am I going to catch that? But... You know, it's that frustration means I'm learning and doing something different. So I put a little bit of movement there. I don't want to get that light. I'm going to see how small that light is. I want to keep that. Remember we did a video on, you know, don't get your roses too light. So I'm watching, you know, where's your, where's your lights? Where's your lights in this rose here, right? Keep it small, lighter, smaller. Let's put a little cool, cooler color here. Just a little bit of our red violet in there, kicking that yellow out and pushing in a little bit cooler to the shadow side here. We'll do that. Let's strike a bit of warm back up over here again because we're going to come right into the front. And we want to get it warmer. Let's go a little bit lighter, heavier texture, boom. And all of this through simultaneous contrast, all of this is going to make my outside edges of the petals of this rose look more transparent. So there's a certain amount of building that I want to do into the front of the rose to do it. Now, there's other roses I paint where I do the whole thing transparent. See, I just slide that light right in there like that. Slide it right in there like that. Kind of, kind of imagine it tucking up into that, into the bowl. Now that was just a little bit too even. So we just do it again. And that's the thing, guys. See, I'll do something and I'll make a mistake. Yeah, that's a bit. I just kind of laugh at myself a little bit, like, why'd you do that? And then I'll go in and fix it, because I know how to fix it. Because how do I know how to fix it? Because I've made that mistake before. Does that make sense? I've painted so many, I've made that mistake before, and then I figured out how to fix it. And it stays up in here in my old memory banks, and... Uh, I'll, I'll draw back upon it many times to fix it. Let's just re-get our bowl round here again. Just pull up a bit. That's a lifting off technique. Sometimes I leave that. Sometimes I'll just set the light right back in. Right like that. Just light pressure. Just boom. Just like that. And uh, let's go back to a toned red. Right back here. Doesn't have to be the same color. Just real close. We'll just restate that a little bit right in there. Take just the edge and work that edge just a bit more and let that petal get a little bit transparent there. And that works. I think I'll leave that right back out over there. Let's take this red, violet, and red. Give it just an idea here of a... We'll cool that off a bit. That's a little too cool, Dave. We'll warm it with some naphtha red light. Boom. Push that on, and we're going to give a darker, more contrast, little rosebud there. A little bit of light across the front of it. Nice oval shape is the rosebud. I'm running out of board. I might have to glue some more board up there. <laughs> but uh, we'll push just a little edge there. Just an idea, just a casual little idea there of the shape. I like the extender for causing the paint to slide. Push it around a bit. 
and just leave it. That's all that little guy needs out there. It's not too bad. Let's uh, cool it, darken it, tone it, a little green. Red violet, Napsol red light, and a little bit of green to tone it down. We'll push some of that right back there. We'll lighten and warm with just a little bit of Napsol red light. So we'll, we don't want to go too much. We want to leave that color. So we'll have a little bit of that color back there. This is a nothing rose. This is one that you just kind of put in the shape and the color in so that the somebody knows, yeah, that's kind of the color of a rose. That's maybe a rose back there. And if they're kind of guessing a little bit, you've done your job because that's the one everyone needs to look at, that one. Let's put a little more pink right in there, a little warmer because I can. There we go. That's kind of pretty, but I did take out it a little bit. There you go. See, I play too. We all play, <laughs> you know, and it's okay. It's okay. You know, just don't get too frustrated. A little frustration is okay, but don't get too frustrated because it's just all part of learning. Now, see, that's too bright. How do you get rid of that? Let's go to the little bit of green. Boom. Just a bit of that. See, nice tone. Nice tone, a little bit of movement here, boom, boom, boom. Yep, matter of fact, I really like that tone. And so let's just restate that one right across to there. Let's just restate that rose working right in there. So I'll pull that color back, lighten it up just a bit and pull the edge right there and pull that in and just blur that in. Right there, and now I've got that softer, more translucent. If I want it to get even more translucent, I give it more of a light edge. The lighter the edge, the more translucent the petal. Remember that. The lighter the edge, the more translucent the petal. Okay? I can take a bit of that cool and just shove it right in there. That would be kind of pretty up on this side there, though. A little bit of that movement. That's nice. Just blur that out a bit. I like that tune. Just, just do that. Just, and you know, and everything. So, like this is already dry. See, I mean, it's warm, dry day today, but it looks like I've painted this whole thing in oils because I'm a tone painter. I mix tones, and I don't play with it. I just keep going. Just keep going. If I want to rework an area, like maybe I want to make that a little bit more yellow into there, I'll add the yellow. And then I'll reset set my lighter pink right in there again. And sometimes I'll just take a clean brush and just redirect and lift off just a bit. Because that's what this paint's designed to do. And uh, you may not be able to do that with the paint you're using. It all depends. You know, I had one person to tell me, can you tell me, you know, what's the difference between this paint, this paint, I use this paint, how to do this. I don't know. I don't paint with any other paints anymore. I use this. And I designed this paint to do these things. And it is a different type of acrylic. And I don't take my time knowing, learning any other type of acrylic. I spend my time trying to paint beautiful flowers. And it takes too much time to go out there and learn all these other acrylics. I don't do it. These are my acrylics. These are what I use. These are the only thing I use and the only things I paint with. And uh, that is the really, guys, that's the greatest way to learn, you know. I used to always say, I always say this to my students. I said, learning how to paint a technique or using a, a certain medium or paint, and you can use whatever you want, oils, watercolor, whatever. But it's like your car. And, you know, um, you, you know your car, you know how when to start pushing the brake to stop, how soon it takes. You know your car. You go drive a different car, like whenever I travel and I go rent a car, that rental car feels weird for the first couple of days of using it. Everything, it, I got to learn it. And then after you've driven it for like a week or so, yeah, it's not so bad. But you have to learn it. And every time that you use a different type of paint or change mediums or do that kind of stuff, you have to learn it again. That's a learning process that you all have in there, right? And and so 
we we all have to go through it. That's a normal thing. So I don't have that anymore. I paint with one paint. That's all I use. And I'm not saying go paint with just one paint. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying these are things that have helped me. And, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I'm just going to push another little petal right out there. Ah, that's kind of neat. That kind of did that flower there. And we'll push some soft ones back here. Just a bit of that. Just real soft movements here. Just a bit. And I'm just going to blur most of this because I'll do some negative painting. We talked about that. But see, if I want to make transparency or translucency and stuff, I like these little petals out here, you're seeing the color from the background through it. So if I want to get this back in here, i got to go back. We did some pine green and some burnt sand. It doesn't even have to be the same color. It just has to be close. Let's just push a little bit right like that, right into that flower. Just push it into the flower. Boom, just like that. Now I have, it's not transparent, but I have the, I have the ability to make the look of transparency, just boom, like that, by just taking, and remember the lighter the edge, the more transparent the flower petal. But I have the ability to uh, make that petal and stuff look transparent there, right? It's an optical thing. Sargent said that. When I, and it took me the longest time to understand what was it he saying? What is he, is he saying? You know, he, he, you know, and I, I learned, you know, back into the decorative painting, you thinly, and I learned for the Dutch, you know, thin, wash the color on, mop it a little bit to blend it all out and everything. And Sargent said, no, if you had, and he was talking about this veil going over to this lady's arm. And he said, what you do is you take the color of the veil and the color of the arm and you put those two together. And then that gives it the optical look of, and because that's what happens in nature. You know, you don't see the transparency, you see the color. What your eye sees is the color of the veil and the color of the flesh together. That's an optical thing, just like what I showed you with the simultaneous contrast. They're optical things. And when he said that, and, and then I tried it, and I went, oh my gosh, that's true. It's an optical thing. And I started totally changing the way I paint things. More optical. And that's why I paint today. I paint a lot of things for optics. Study a lot of theory and a lot of optics. And... When you study those, you get that, you, you start to understand. So let's just, how do you make this, how do you make that transparent back there? You take the color of the green, color of the red, push them together till they make a common color. Right there like that. And that's the color of the rose coming together with the color of the background coming together right there like that. Give it a lighter little edge here. Boom, right like that, the lighter the edge the more transparent it has, and you can give the look of transparent petals. See, just like that. Ta-da. Yep. And it works. And we'll grab a little bit more red and green. Just We were toning this one down a bit more. A little more green in it. So let's just grab that and push that little bit more green back there. A little bit darker. That's a bit too dark there. I can fix it. Let's take a little color, push that out. Some of the prettiest roses, you just do just real quick little things here. I want to close this edge up just a bit, so I'm going to take some of this tone, a bit of the light, and just kind of close up this edge here. Push so that there's not too much definition there because I'm way out of my center of interest for this painting which is going to be that other rose up there. That's good. Let's um, go in and create a... Now, if you create too much more dark or too much more contrast away from something, you might have to change your, your optics. You might have to push that particular color into the, you know, into the, uh, the flower as well. So, you, you know, you can just... If you do too much of this, you can destroy your optics 
here. But I do like a little bit of negative painting that helps pop out a little more contrast there. Like that. And drop that in. Drop some around here. I just like the breaking up of the color here. Probably will do lighter. So I'll take some green, I'll take the green, I'll tone it down, soften it down. You harmonize it with some of the red that's on your palette. We'll lighten it up. Let's get a bit of yellows in there. Just act like you know what you're doing. Just toss that color in there. And uh, yeah, let's get some a bit lighter stems, some lighter leaves coming out. I like that boom, powerful light right there. It's a nice glow, a little different. Right there in the front here. Let's just grab a bit of movement here. I like lines of movement through the flowers. Here, let's grab some. I like this Darulide and uh, Pine Green. I've been using that on the last couple of paintings quite heavy and I really like that. It's just such a pretty vibrant green here. Now if you want it transparent, push it to mix it in. Right in there like that. You can give it a light little edge and you got some uh, transparent looking leaves. You have the transparency coming into your leaves. Let's give it a bit of light. Remember your greens though. Change the, change the greens here. So that's a pretty green. But let's change it a bit. A little more pine green into it. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna. Change. Get some of those greens going in there. It's kind of hard with that glare. Here. Boom. And a little more dary light here. Push some of that color around. Just see some of those colors. Just, you know, just going to keep my leaves here. Just really casual, I think. Because um, it's about this, it's about that center rose in this painting, more than anything else. But I will add some. Nice. And then just take it off a bit. Boom. How oh, I've showed you before how I'll just do that. Now that took off a little too much. Pushed a little too much, Dave. And uh, nice little light. So I'll add a few other leaves. Some changing the colors. Always kind of going through your colors, changing them a bit. Pulling some of the lights there. Yeah, just varying that Darulite in there is really kind of nice, but it gives it a little different look here. Now let's push this in a little bit, just model up some greens. I just like movement too, so sometimes when I feel that's eh, a little stiff, I'll just model up. Add as many lighter leaves as you want here to kind of finish this. You know, drop in a few and, you know, it's up to you just what you want to do. This is here and pull in some and lighten. They should never be as light as your roses. Then they start to compete with the roses. But uh, you can get a few, few more bits of light in there. And this is what I'll do. I'll just build this a couple of times. Get some lights going in here, some more lights, and uh, boom, get this going here like this. Get that nice light, but that that's how you do your transparency, so, yeah, see, that's a good light, bit of light right there. You can toss in a bit of a color, so just little marks of it, movements and stuff kind of fill in a bit, but... Uh, that's how you do transparency. And, you know, it's, uh, and of course, that's just one of the ways. I do it some other ways as well. But uh, 
That's one real quick way. You just take the color, push, and push in. Now, I have so much green here, so what do I have to do? What should I do here? Is I should take this green right into the rose, right there. Push that right in. Let those two colors kind of combine right into there. If I want to have that transparency, right? So you can see the transparency building. I'll take a little water right here and just push right through. I'll control that. And then I'll take a bit of my cooler red and some quinacridone and some naphthol red light here and a touch of light here and give just the edge of these petals here, right like that. And that helps you start to build your transparency, see, that you have there. If I put a tiny little mark out here, I increase the transparency of the petals, see, by increasing the outside light, you increase the transparency of the petals. So, but see, that incorporates that right through, and you have that nice green in there. So after you've, you know, put a few leaves on, you may want to come back and add just a bit back into the backs of your roses. Maybe some light little colors there to suggest just a bit of transparency. Boom, right into right into your roses. So build your leaves out, build it out whatever you want to do. I'm going to add a couple more right over there. That'll finish it all off. Be a nice little painting. It's all about that center rose. <laughs> it's it's nice, nice center rose. Um, and uh, But that's how you do your transparency, okay? So put those colors on, push it around with a little water and, you know, but you may have to totally change the technique depending on what you're painting with because some paints won't do it, you know, but, you know, that's, that's our job as artists is to figure out, you know, what, what uh, techniques we need to do. How do we, how do we do that? But Sargent gave us the pathway. It's the flesh color. It's the veil color together, push them together. And that's the tone that you need to do. They're optical things like simultaneous contrast. It's an optical thing. I, not painting transparent, to make the back of that rose. I'm optically doing that, okay? I'm creating a color from the pushing the two of them together that your eye sees as transparent, okay? That's how you do it. And we fool the eye, okay? That we're artists, we fool the eye all the time, okay? All right, so hopefully you've clicked like on the video, I hope, okay? Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to go over because next week we're starting up on the uh, Jansen Art Studio. We're starting all of our lessons. lessons. Come paint with me. Don't forget to go over there and sign up on the newsletters and check out all the things. You can, all the videos that we have on YouTube and stuff and, and more, there's more, are over there. They're easier to actually find because you can find all the playlists. You can look through all the videos, scroll through them a lot easier than you can actually do on YouTube and stuff like that. So they're easy to go over to the Jansen Art Studio. Just up in the links, up in the description, is the links for everything that we do. Is always up there. Just go up there and you'll see Jansen, free videos, Jansen Art Studio. Click that and you'll go over to those pages, okay? And keep an eye on those because that's where we're going to run the classes, um, the free classes here starting this next week where I'm joining together with four other teachers, four other YouTube teachers, and we're going to paint together and show you some fun things, okay? Alrighty, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot.